Uh, hello, my name is Sina. I'm an internet trail of bits with the blockchain team. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to tell you about a new paradigm and approaching source code vulnerability detection, namely the ML driven approach focused on the solidity language. So there's a problem. Uh, and we will discuss it in this slide. But before that, I have to tell you that Trail of Bits has been accumulating lots of data during their uh, security assessments and audits in the previous years. And we want to statistically utilize such data to detect uh, similar vulnerable code in the new client's code bases based on the uh, accumulated and piled up knowledge hidden in the previous security assessments and audits. And what we're basically trying to do is exploring machine learning driven approaches to see if we can improve the current uh, static analysis approaches, which uh, usually suffer from uh, high false positive rates and uh, hinder the uh, the uh, the efficiency and productivity of the uh, of the auditors. So, related to the uh, to our purpose, uh, there have been uh, other efforts focused towards the very same problem, and uh, there have been a surge in the past two years, and very exciting progresses have been made. Two of which we discuss here briefly. We have uh, Vulcan, a master's thesis from MIT CCL, just published this year. It's a tool which uh, have been successfully able to detect some line-based uh, vulnerabilities in functions of solidity missed by the static analyzer Mithril, which was used to label the data. And this is the, uh, the surprising and exciting element here. Uh, that is, supervised learning for code is really hard because you need high quality ground truth data sets without any noise, but that's too costly because you need humans to do that. So you use data labeled automatically by uh, static analyzers, which do contain noise in them. So an ML-based approach detecting vulnerabilities labeled by a static analyzer, which uh, did miss uh, some of the uh, vulnerabilities, shows how promising this research avenue is. The other tool named Smart Embed is a web-based tool, and that's the closest thing to what our research has already accomplished. Uh, what they did at Monash University was to develop a sequential token-based word embedding model based on the uh, Skipgram model uh, on unsupervised data extracted from publicly available smart contracts uh, on the Etherscan. So what we need to notice here is that all the approaches currently focus on vulnerabilities already detectable and, or detected by static analyzers. Here at Trail of Bits, we leveled up the game and went for the vulnerabilities currently only detectable by actual human auditors and not those detectable by uh, static analyzers like Slither. So regarding that, we have developed a pipeline, uh, as you can see in this slide. Uh, the way it works is that we have a database of vulnerabilities, and then we have the, uh, the archives of the client's code bases. So we developed an, an extraction script, which uh, would automatically uh, extract the, uh, the, vulnerable, the vulnerable functions from the, uh, the previous clients based on our vulnerability database, and would generate uh, their uh, corresponding Slither representation and Slither, uh, which has the same pronunciation almost as Slither, is Slith intermediate representation, which is trail of bits representation for a uh, lo low level representation for uh, Solidity code. So when we generate those representations, we then utilize uh, machine learning similarity detection methods to compare the uh, new client's code bases to the vulnerabilities that we have. And we will see if uh, there, uh, there are uh, uh, high, uh, high similarity scores between any of the vulnerabilities in our database and uh, any functions in the new client's code base. So the proposed techniques for the uh, similarity matching part uh, uh, are uh, as follows, which uh, include unsupervised and supervised methods. And the background for this is that a lot of work happened in the past five years or so in the academic research community, looking at how you can take machine learning concepts almost uh, all of them borrowed from the field of natural language processing and use them in a development or a code analysis context. So that's the vision and it is very plain and simple, yet reasonably ambitious and promising based on the previous work in research for uh, bridging the uh, sort of um, semantic gap between the performance of a human auditor and a machine learning detection system in the discovery of vulnerabilities. It's basically to complement what is being done by human auditors uh, a trail of bits with automated approaches. So for this, we have proposed a uh, few techniques to try out with the Solidity language at the highest abstraction level, namely source code. And for developing such models, uh, we consider both uh, supervised and unsupervised methods. And 
what we did, what, uh, what we have done already is to develop a baseline unsupervised model based on the uh, trained with the uh, with the data of the previous clients uh, that Trello Bits has worked with. And what we did was uh, tokenize source code functions and then them in a Euclidean space, as you can see in the diagram on the top right corner. That's not three dimensions. It's from the uh, embedding projector uh, from uh, TensorFlow, but uh, it's, it's more than that. Uh, it's 100 dimensions, actually. So what, what we did, uh, when we project these uh, embeddings onto a Euclidean space, then we will be able to measure and quantify the distance, which is the dissimilarity between different tokens. And because functions are constituted from tokens, we can just add up the differences and get the similarity or dissimilarity between any of the two uh, code snippets in any size. And further down the road, we are working on other unsupervised and supervised models utilizing data labeled by uh, static analyzers like uh, Slither and Mithril. So what we're going to do is to try Ngram GraphVox and Ottoman Coders, uh, which, uh, which constitutes a few um, graph divergence kernels. And for supervised methods, we are going to try graph matching networks and SimGNN, uh, which, which utilizes uh, attention mechanism uh, to, to um, uh, heighten the, uh, the accuracy of the results. And the challenges that we faced were almost all about data. And a common mistake uh, that everybody, almost everybody does, and uh, I, I was prone to as well, was to focus on the model because it's sexy. Uh, if you're doing machine learning, you will not realize the importance of the data collection and cleaning phase unless you actually get to have to do it. Um, uh, regarding that, archiving the, uh, the client's code bases uh, was, a really, uh, was a really tough process because we had all sorts of dependency issues unique to each client's code base. And uh, even then, uh, when we compiled the, uh, uh, each, uh, each client's code base, uh, the vulnerabilities were very scarce. And among those scarce data, uh, some of the vulnerabilities were too general or they were too specific. So they were not very useful for uh, co compiling up a uh, validation data set. And beside that, uh, we had the Salsi compiler, which would generate different uh, bytecodes for uh, each uh, client's code base based on the uh, the time that they were developed. And that would uh, lead to uh, more noise uh, in, in our representations in terms of detecting the similarity between them. You know, different IDs, different tokens, uh, that, 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 would, uh, that would make uh, uh, the probability of making mismatching way higher. And also for the, uh, for the supervised approaches, when we use a static analyzer, uh, we introduce uh, noise into the data because they have lots of false positives. So that will be a problem as well. And last but not least, there is no correct theoretically proven representation for modeling source code, as we know. The best practice currently in use in the industry is to use a combination of different representations at different levels, namely source code using utilizing source code tokens, the abstract syntax tree, the control flow graph, et cetera. So right now we are only using the tokens uh, because we were developing a baseline model to benchmark our efforts down the road. So uh, for the uh, for the data collection phase in the in the information uh, pipeline, we uh, we spent a lot of time, almost all of my internship, to try to extract the vulnerabilities and make this uh, a very automated process. Uh, uh, we we had to uh, compile each project based on its unique dependencies and then extract uh, the vulnerabilities and generate the uh, the slither representations. And then we would export all of these vulnerabilities into a database for which you can see the schema in this slide. We know what the uh, vulnerability type is. We know its severity per the auditor. We know its finding ID, so we can refer to its uh, to more uh, deeper explanations regarding the vulnerability in the previous reports. We know its uh, line numbers in the, uh, in the contract file. We know the function name and the parameters. We know which contract the vulnerability originated from because sometimes a vulnerability can span multiple files. And we also know the project ID. And in this pie chart, you can see the distribution of the almost 100 manually extracted vulnerabilities from the uh, Trail of Bits previous uh, audits. Uh, this is not all of the clients. Uh, it, it was a very time consuming process, but um, yes, uh, we, 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 we were uh, able to until now, extract vulnerabilities for uh, 10 different clients. Thank you for censoring the client names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so all in all, my contributions have been to gather these uh, 
vulnerabilities uh, from the uh, from the previous clients. Uh, we also spent uh, a lot of time on resuming the development of our prototype named uh, Slither Simul and also its representation Slither because this is a twofold goal. Uh, one being making Slither as generalizable as possible for research purposes because we want to develop an end-to-end -end system lacking feature engineering at all. We want to give it uh, the code base and get the, uh, the, fe uh, the feature representations at the other end. And also for practical purposes, we are making it uh, sp uh, as specific as, uh, as possible uh, to increase the precision and recall for practical purposes. And we are also working on its implementation as extensions for IDEs. And apart from that, we also spend some time on implementing the baseline word embedding model. And for future work, we are going to uh, take a look at the uh, supervised learning approaches uh, and automate the data labeling process using Slither, uh, which will also introduce noise. But we know that uh, that is not a huge issue because we have seen improvements uh, and, and uh, promising, uh, promising progress in that area. Apart from that, we are working on a unified vulnerability database to kind of uh, merge uh, both vulnerabilities detected by our human auditors and the vulnerabilities generated, uh, uh, detected by, uh, by Slither. And uh, besides that, we are working on models with more expressivity, uh, specifically graph-based models, because that's what's uh, being the, uh, uh, that's what's being uh, working uh, and giving the best results right now in other languages like C++ and Java. And also, we are uh, preparing to test uh, our prototype in real-world cases uh, in new, for new clients and audits and see how it improves the auditor's performance. And that's it. I'd be happy to 